Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, everybody. Now, see, this is the second go around uh, for this show. Uh, and uh, let me see, you can see me now. Uh, the thing was, the first uh, half hour in which we had Larry Bubbles Brown, and I wish there were a way I could, I could play it for you again, but I don't want to bore the audiences listening to us live. Uh, but the first, uh, on the video, not on the audio, on the audio portion of our show, the audio output of our show, it was just, it was just fine. But I think the audio was okay now. Somebody just wrote, audio stinks. Would somebody please write and make sure and tell me that the audio now works, like Tyson's Acosta. Since the audio stinks, does it stink now? No, I don't think so. I think it's just fine. Uh, what ha I, I can't even begin to explain what went on here. God, uh, it's a, it, it was a killer. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I don't know. I, I did a few things. I didn't, I didn't do anything to change the sound, but somehow, oh, I know what it was. Over the last day or so, without me asking, Windows turned, re rebooted by machine and put in some new stuff. Now, that's fine. Kind of, because it doesn't ask you first. But when it does that, sometimes it changes other stuff in the system that was set one way, and now it changes it to another way. So anyway, uh, okay, thank you, Mike, uh, for telling me that it works fine, since Tyson's Acosta wouldn't. Uh, anyway, so I wonder why there weren't a lot of people listening, and uh, I guess that was the reason why. And then I went over to look at the people who were listening to the audio on uh our GabNet site, and that audio uh, had a lot of people. So I d didn't know why, and then I looked, and it, uh, some people were writing, oh, there's no sound. What happened to the sound? Uh, Excellent now, says Tyson Zacosta. Okay, good, okay. Anyway, that's what happened. And uh, I'm sorry to Larry Bubbles Brown that his wonderful portion didn't get heard, but all you have to do if you want to hear it, it it's very simple. You go over to... Uh, uh, gabnet.net after the show was over or whatever and listen to our audio because the audio that audio went out okay that audio goes out through a different system okay uh, so that's uh, and the video you're going to see tonight when we post it will just be starting from this point does any of that make sense? I hope it does. I'm so sorry. You know, I do this all by myself, and so when I go on the air, I don't know exactly how it's going out. I just assume it's going out okay. And um, it's that fucking Windows where they they put something new in, and then they rejigger everything, and you have to... I should... Uh, I didn't even remember it happening because it happened over the weekend. Okay, or maybe it happened, maybe it happened in the last, it would have had to have happened in the last 24 hours. Yeah, I came in here this afternoon and my sign on screen was on, and I didn't, I thought maybe I had turned it off or something like that. No, what happened is Microsoft just automatically re rebooted my machine, installed some new stuff, and didn't ask me for it. So, what that did is it then changed the settings within the program I use to. Uh, show you the video on this program. Uh, is that, does that make sense? This is, you know, this is just another one of the things just drives me fucking bad shit. Anyway, let me turn on the Skype. Let's see if, I, if my, my friend's calling can give me any feeling of, 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 uh, of, of relief here. Let me also delete a lot of stuff here because we have a lot of our old calls in here and I want to get them out of here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. Uh, and our uh, number, if you want to know how to call, just go over to gabnet.net and over there you will find, uh, uh, and, and rightly so, you will find uh, the, um, uh, the, what do you call it? What will you find? Oh, you'll find the, <laughs> you'll find out all the ways you can call this program if you want to. And we will be happy to uh, entertain you as a, as a guest. Uh, and it tells you how to use Skype, and it tells you all of that. And while you're there, you're not going to miss any of the video of the show 
because the video is showing over at gabnet.net as well and does every single night. So I, anyway, uh, oh, now we're starting to get a lot of people watching. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. I really am so sorry about that. Anyway, our lines are open, so I'm waiting for you guys to give me a call. Uh, and uh, I don't know why my CPU usage is so high tonight, but, you know, go figure. Uh, there's so many things I have to watch out for. I, I, maybe I should just go back to doing audio only. Anybody think that's a good idea? Or do you like this with the, uh, uh, with the um, um, video? Do you find that it's fun? Do you enjoy being able to see our ugly pusses throughout the whole show? Anyway, our, uh, I'm just waiting. I'm, I'm stalling here now waiting for somebody to call. Uh, and uh, who knows who, who's going to be the first one in. I saw that Kevin came online. I don't know that Phil is online. Uh, I, in, fact, in fact, I can't tell who's online right now. So anyway, uh, I'm tired. Hey, look, if you don't want to call, I can, I can close this thing down and go to, go to sleep. I've been tired all day. Of course, I'm so, I slept, I napped so much all day that I probably can't go to sleep tonight. So... <laughs> It's going to be time to take another pill. Oh, look, Bob Eberth is the first person to call. Uh, hello, Robert. How are you this evening? Not too bad. Yeah. what's? Uh, you're the first one tonight. That's unusual. Well, I got the new Skype, and it is terrible. The new Skype? Yeah. Last night during the show, I had four windows of four faces and little circles on the top for the rest of the faces. Yeah, that's the problem with it. And that's the reason why I have not gone to it for this show, because I'm, I'm showing the Skype screen, and I don't like that, uh, that, that new configuration. Now, what happened here is a, I could have told you a couple of weeks ago, well, just go over to Skype, then say that you want to install the new thing, and then it would give you a drop-down menu, and one of the things would be Skype Classic. All right. And then you would just click on that and you would be able to download the one I'm using here on the air. Well, unfortunately, Robert, it's uh, gone. It's gone. That's Skype classic. Here's what you do. You simply go to um, after the show, just Google the following. Hold on a second. Let me get the uh, let me see here. I want to get the information about Skype. OK, what you do. Is, and everybody, write this down. If you don't like the new Skype, just online go Skype version 7.40.0.151. That's Skype version 7.40.151. And when you use that, okay, uh, you'll, it, what'll come up are a lot of different things in which places you can go that have this old version or the most recent of the, the version I'm using, the first, the latest version before the new version of Skype, uh, and that will work and that will clear it up. You can just use that. And what I found is when I loaded that in, at least on another machine, and I'm not on Windows. It loaded side by side with the old one, with the new one. So you'll have both of them on your machine available to you. So it's 7.40.0.151? Yep. I'll and, give and that a try. Just, 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 go just, to old just, Skype and just Google that, and uh, uh, that will probably, you'll probably get just a whole bunch of, well, let me see here. Let me let me just do it on my browser here for a second, just for the hell of it. Give me give me that number again. It was uh, seven point four zero seven point four zero zero point one five one. I believe that's what you gave me. Yep. Okay. Let me uh, let me search it. Just that number alone. Okay. If you just Put in that number in your Google. It says where to download Skype, blah, 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 you know, 7.40.0.151. And then you uh, you download that, 
and you open it up and it'll you'll find all kinds of places you can go to get it and so on and downloads and so on and just it, and every one of those sites it would start to uh, load yeah and in a little load it would say cannot reach the server site and then immediately boot me up to the uh, Skype home site oh it's funny because I get I get a whole bunch of choices when you uh, Google so did I and I tried my computer crashed. I was down for three days. Yeah. I made the mistake of uh, trying out a new virus program. Yeah. I didn't like it. I removed it from my computer. Yeah. A month later, portions of it started working. Wow. So I went and got the removal tool for that unit, and uh, it killed my computer. Son of a bitch. The only way I can get the computer back running was to borrow a startup disk off of another yeah. computer, put that in just to get me going. Yeah. And here comes Rob. Rob had had got the new the new Skype a while back. Uh, did you ever unload that new Skype, or is that the one you're using, uh, Rob? We lost Rob. <laughs> well, there's the new Skype for you. Um, but anyway, uh, did you did you just check putting that number in? Uh, not right oh. now. Oh well, when you check it, there'll be a whole Google will bring up a whole list of places you can go to download that version. And when you download that version, that's the version I'm using. And as you can see here on the air, I don't get any of the bubbles and the circles and the shit like well, that. Well, I don't know what I was doing last night. I was futzing around with it, and. I finally ended up with one where you were on the whole screen mm -hmm. and everything else was little bubbles on the top. Yeah. They think that's wonderful. They think that's a wonderful new way to be doing it. And quite I think these people that modify these programs and design them never use them. The, yeah. And I universally, if you go online and uh, ask about the new Skype or something or look for comments on it or reviews, everybody says it sucks. You know? Why yeah. why fuck with something that works? Oh, well, we've got now little bubbles up there. You don't have to get the bubbles. Yeah, fuck you with your fucking bubbles. Give me back, you know, let me have a choice in my in my they pathetic little life. Tonight. Huh? They took your bubbles tonight. They, they t oh, yeah, they <laughs> we lost my bubbles tonight. Right. Well, you can go online and hear it on the, on the, the, the GabNet audio uh, that will be available to to you. I don't know what happened to Rob. We lost him. He uh, he called and he you know uh, he may have had trouble with the screen. Here he comes again. Let's see what we got here. Uh, there he is. There there's Rob. What happened to you, Rob? Ah, uh, this computer. I am done with it. Really. Really. Uh, same thing as last night. I could not hear you. And I had to go and change the video, the audio source, the speaker thing. Oh, oh you know changed. what that is? Is that a Windows machine you've got? Yeah. Okay. Came you, this morning, you, you, came in tonight and sat down and noticed that the machine rebooted itself. Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly what happened to me, and that's why nobody heard audio for the first half hour of the show. Because okay. I wouldn't mind it if they wanted to ch just upgrade the, the OS, that would be fine. But it fucks with everything else. I, I don't get it. It's just, that's why I'm a Mac guy. I don't care. You could keep this Windows crap. I hate Windows. Well, the only Which, thing I use my Windows machine for is the show. I do like the way it runs the show. I, I like uh, OBS, which is the thing I use, uh, much better uh, in, in this respect. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, tonight I was pre-recording one of my shows. Yeah. And... Like I said, I just got this Windows 10 put back on and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm noticing I couldn't get the levels I wanted. Mm -hmm. Everything was in mono. Ah. From my mixer board, it was mono. From my MP3s, it was mono. Now, are you, and, are you Windows as well? Yeah, Windows 10. Well, there you go. And I rebooted my computer and the stereo came back and all my levels and everything. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Yeah, just, you know, I when, mean, uh, uh, when this computer goes, it's been. I'm just going to get a Mac, uh, uh, either a Mac Mini or one of the ones. What do they call them? The i something or other. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the i the iMac. Yeah, 
the, the iMac. iMac. Yeah. Uh, if, if you already have monitors and stuff, the Mini Mac's a really good idea if you want a Mac. You know. Yeah. I mean, I have two two twenty four inch monitors, so I'm happy with that. So yeah. the Mac Mini is probably the way to yeah, go. You would agree with Mac Mini, right, uh, my Phil? You have you've had a Mac Mini for a while. I was very happy with my Mac Mini. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wanted to render uh, my photographs faster, yeah. and that's why. And I I was able to get a deal on a Mac Pro, uh, although I initially I don't see that much difference between the Mini and the Pro. Uh, there's got to be because there's so much more to the Pro than there is to the Mini. Yeah. But um, I've been using, uh, I have a late 2014 Mini mm -hmm. that has all the power in the world. I, and I was happy with it. Alex is going to buy it. And uh, un unless you want to pay $301. <laughs> oh, just quit. Stop. The bidding, the bidding is over with. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism in its finest. Okay. <laughs> do I hear? Uh, do I hear three hundred and one? How about three hundred and two? That is a magic number. Uh, a promise is a promise, so I, I don't break those. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When are you getting it to me? By the way. Uh, you know, I just have to sit down and copy some stuff that's on the de desktop that didn't copy over uh, to the new desktop. And then I'll uh, wipe it and send it. Okay. All right. I'll have plenty of time next week, too. Even after the operation, I'm just going to be, you know, home. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I just can't lift anything. Yeah. You just really have to pray nothing goes wrong with that operation, Alex. It won't be. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I say a little prayer every night for Phil, but it's not because I love Phil, but because I want the goddamn computer. No, you actually, know. what he said to me is, geez, send it out before the operation. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a 302. What, what, what'd you say? Oh, what'd you say? It's up to 302. 302. 302. I see. Okay. Ah, okay. Do I hear 303? <laughs> this is going to be a long night. No. <laughs> hey, you know, three of those I, no, but what I'm what, I, what, what I'm saying is, that we, we, let me go back to what we were talking about here with with Windows. Uh, yeah. I don't find the Windows machines terrible. In fact, I find it works quite fine for the show. But like tonight. What happened, folks? You didn't hear any sound. Now I didn't. I, I didn't look at what muffled. people were writing, there, and they were muffled. they were writing to me that it was it was it was bad. There wasn't any sound for about the first twenty five minutes, and then when I put it on default, it went to one of these, um, what do you call it? One of these uh, webcams to get the sound. Uh, so you were getting the sound from. Oh, the, that's why it was muffled. Yeah. So then I finally just put it on built in whatever. And I'm fine, and now everybody's got great sound, and you know. But uh, the fact of the matter was, all of that happened because I came back to my machine today, and it had rebooted itself. And I didn't stop to think I better check everything, because I keep, you know, it ha when it, uh, it things happen, and then you forget about them. And well, so I, I'm having a problem with uh, Apple. I, I sat down and I got an update for a program that I have called Chronosync, which syncs yeah. my uh, drives to my backup drives. Yeah. And uh, so it wanted me to enter my Apple password. Yeah. Well, I haven't changed my Apple password since the beginning of time. And now it, it's I put it in and it says it's not working. And then it, then I go, okay, I tried all the usual suspects yeah. and none of them worked. So I went to change my password and it wasn't it wasn't working uh you know no matter what and then it wanted eight characters a, a large uh, a capital a number mm -hmm. and, and so forth i mean how many passwords am i going to have and uh oh, i know I, rob's got that thing but well, you know, no this, no this no, no i had the same thing happen with apple where i where it, it's asked me for a new password and then they so then I decided, oh, I'll just go back to one other password. No, you no, can't go to that one. Me. You can't use the last 10, 30 passwords that you used right, before. Exactly. You so, know, you fuck know, you. If I, I if I want to make it, if I want to make it one, two, three, four, that's up to me as to whether yeah. I want that level of security or not. Right. It depends. So it's not necessarily. If you think about it from the from the from the business's perspective, if mm -hmm. you make your password Alec. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, 
and they're going to be liable for, you know, somebody breaching your account. It's not necessarily up to you. Well, I mean, uh, it, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm going to sue them for something that I take. Res I take full responsibility for my password. You know, I guess they do hack it. And then you go to Apple and say, help me fix it. Uh, maybe that's what Rob is alluding All to. All I'm saying is, the, 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 I, I'm up to now, I, I can't, oh, I do remember my new cur current, do I remember my current password? Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> you know what I do? You, here, Here's how I do it. Here's how I do it. Do any, do any of you have the, um, well, I'm sure you do, uh, the here, Google browser, I, Chrome. Do you have the Chrome browser? Mm -hmm. I won't yeah, use it. Go, go over to settings. Yeah. Go all the way down, you hit advanced, click on that, it'll go down to another more more stuff and then go to pa go to passwords. Then you go over to passwords and you type in what particular site, you know, you can't remember the password to, and those come up and then you have to click in your password to get that password. But it's there and it's it, it that's how well, I get them when I forget them to see what it, the password it is. Friendly. Tonight it, it, it yeah. sounds friendly, but I, I, my own feeling is not to trust it because I think okay. uh, the ability of sophisticated hacking from whomever is. At are a you point that important, John? Johnny, are you that important? It was the Russians. <laughs> are you that important? You know, I think I don't care. I'm not. I mean, okay, I, I'm not a, that important. Steal, question, steal right? my fucking identity. I don't give a shit. I've got a miserable life anyway. You know, you're welcome to it. Yes, You're Patrick. Make it more by the miserable way, when by they the way, steal it. by the way, Alex, they just make it more miserable when they steal it. Patrick, who is going to be now the star of the upcoming film on the life of Stephen Hawking. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> Can you not see me? Yeah, I can see you. Well, then I had my hand up before Patrick. No oh. offense, Pat. Oh. No. No. Patrick, excuse me. Right? Excuse oh. me, Patrick. I have to uh, defer. Yeah. Renee. Patrick, I have to Percy, defer to Renee. No. Your camera's too low. If your hand yeah. was up, it wasn't visible. Yeah. Yeah, because my face was okay. Go ahead, Patrick. No, 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 no. Renee, please talk. I'm sorry. Just I did see you with your hand up, and then I forgot that your hand was up because you were over in the corner, and I saw Patrick, the, and I thought of Stephen Skype Hawking, bubble. and that he's in his wheelchair, too, and, you know, whatever. I would have blown the joke. Huh? So, number one about the passwords, uh, passwords really quickly, pick a verse in a song and, and use the... You know, we were going to the dock of the bay or something like that. You can get, use how that. How do you get part. numbers in that? How do you get it, numbers in that? Well, if it's a song's about money, then you would just use the money sign. Or if the song's got like uh, 999 or 666. But also, I would like to put in a bid. This is a nerd joke. I would like to put in a bid for the um, Mac Mini. And my bid, is, <laughs> my, three, my bid is 3.1.41. Five nine oh, two that's six, right. Yeah, yeah. Very good. I'm glad you said something. I got to make a phone call. What? It's a pie day. He's got to go buy a pie. No, no, no. It's my best friend's birthday. <laughs> Let me. <Okay. laughs> Hang on. So today's pie day, and Neil deGrasse Tyson says you have to remember 33 of the numbers in order to make a real pie. Quote. Oh. And that's what I was reading. Was the 33 numbers that he tweeted out. Hey, I'll be in Vegas for 420 this year. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Good job, Rob. What are you going to, a, a convention? No, my wife and I are going to spend a week on vacation, oh. and we're going to start in Vegas, and then we're going to drive to Southern California and then drive back and fly home from Vegas. So two huh? states where, where 420 is legal. See, on 420. I thought that I would like to take uh, my wife to. I to, asked her, you, you want me? You want to go to Vegas sometime?" She just does not want to go to Vegas. She just hates the idea of Vegas. And I think Vegas is fine if it's only for like three days. That's it. You know, right? Uh, because right. I, I used to have to go there because I worked for when I worked for uh, Play Incorporated. We used to go to the conventions there to sh right. oh, have yeah. booths, and you, I'd be there for five days. By the fourth day, I wanted to shoot myself. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, but for a couple of days, hey, nothing, a lot of fun. You know, we got I, I like Vegas for the weird stuff that's there. Like, I don't go to the shows and everything. I go to the Museum of the Atomic Bomb. I mean, that's a great museum. Yeah. It's right, you know, off the strip. 
and then Pawn Stars. I love Pawn Stars. Oh, I love Pawn I, Stars. I, I love that show. Have you been? It's there? in a shitty neighborhood, though. I mean, the, you, I don't want to be in that neighborhood at night. Have you what, been there to, what, to, to what, the store? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. there? Because I heard that they. Uh, it, the last bunch of years, they no longer shoot at that store. They have they ah, use a set. That, ah. that, uh, I heard the store is very small, narrow, and yeah. long. And ninety yeah. percent of it now is you can buy Pawn Star T-shirts and mugs and hats and every kind of swag. That's sure. what's in the, the whole store now. Yeah. Um, and and so a lot of their business is online and. Um, and and what you see on television now, and you can tell because in the earlier episodes, you could see people walking by outside. They've got this frosted fake door now. Oh no! Uh, no. Oh, okay. So it's uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, yes, a, yes. If you're a photography person, the Museum of Neon. So they have <laughs> yep, and so and they have night tours sometimes. So it's really kind of cool. Um, they have a whole bunch of neon signs in their original states, and they've got uh, a big open field pretty much kind of area, and you will get to be at eye level. The photos are a lot of fun, and then on some nights they will do a night version of it. Well, there's a, there's the Liberace Museum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't miss that. That's it, a good one. You know. But, but, it's the buffet at Harris. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, the best buffet I ha ever had in Vegas was Come at on. the uh, was at the Mirage. Yeah, they had yeah. one motherfucking buffet. You know, yeah. it was exp it wasn't cheap. It was like twenty five bucks, thirty bucks. It was more expensive than most of the dollar twenty five buffets, which are just meant to fill you up and kick you out. Yeah. You know? uh, but um, uh, the buffet at the at the Mirage was terrific. But no, we spent we spent. You know, five days there, six days, and you just want to just climb the fucking walls after a while. If nothing oh, more, the car, the disorienting carpets drive you nuts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I would rent a motorcycle if it's warm enough and go out to the desert and uh, maybe go to Hoover Dam. Or uh, is Joshua Tree near there? It's in uh, Southern California. Joshua Tree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'll tell you what. What I, what I what, well, my my uh, uh, who, oh my girlfriend and I at the time, when I when I lost my show in San Francisco and all the press was hounding me, uh, we just went to Vegas to get away right after the show was over. Went to Vegas and spent a couple of days there. And we went out to I'd never gone out to Hoover Dam, Boulder that's, Dam, whatever you call it. That's, that's a that, tour. It's fascinating. Do you know that it isn't dry yet? Wow. Yeah. That there's so much concrete in that thing yeah. that the wow. really center of it has not completely dried yet. And it was built like 75 yeah. years ago or f longer than that, you know. Um, yeah. it, but it, 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 yeah, that's a fascinating tour. And uh, what was the other? There's one other tour, one other thing we did in Vegas that I found interesting. I'm trying to remember now. Oh, Since yeah. Mar Marjorie's pretty visual with that kind of stuff, why don't you take a look at all of the concerts and or the shows that are going to be for the next six months and find out if any of those are interesting to her and fly at that particular there, point. There's a town mm -hmm. called Pahrump that's yep. uh, Pahrump. just outside yeah. of Vegas. Yeah. And there's a place that you can learn how to shoot called Front Sight. Look them up. It's a very interesting thing. You can take a class for $200, like a three-day handgun class. They, they, and uh, it, it's, it, it's a very, very uh, interesting way to spend three days. Well, I went to, I went to the very, I went to the very, I went to, I went to the very early version of Burning Man. Uh, when, hey, when, 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 when there were only like maybe, you know, 5,000 people there. Yeah, and, wow. and the yeah. best thing you could, the best thing they had, although I wasn't going to use it, was it what they called a drive-by shooting range. <laughs> yeah. And they, they, they still online. Well, I mean, right? it's it's like a, yeah. um, it was like uh, you know, the desert is so long. It's a long desert. It's uh, forty yeah. miles long, I think, <laughs> and about uh, six or eight miles wide. That's <clears> and not and right in the middle of the night, you can actually turn your car lights off take your hand off the wheel and put it on automatic and just drive 40 miles before you hit anything, okay? But anyway, so they had this drive-by shooting range. Who's going to get hurt, right? 
Yeah. And and you could bring a Stand gun up. and you could they had stuffed bunnies and all kinds of things and you would just shoot out of your car as you were driving by. So uh, they call that uh, there's a word for that they uh, they do it with shotguns. It's called sporting clays where they have. Uh, well, you're uh, talking you're talking about about uh, shooting skeet, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, where they, they would make them pop like bunnies yeah. and things like that. Oh really? Oh. Does, doesn't that well, make them thugs? Five of them. Uh, drive-by shootings. Uh, huh? is, is, doesn't it make them thugs because they're doing drive-by shootings? Just because they're white uh, and they're only shooting thugs, bunny right? guys. It makes them thugs when their pants are down around their ass. Oh Jesus! Well, here, we oh, no. here, here we go. go. Here we go. Let me hey, let, let, know, let, let me go stick my finger down my throat. I need to puke. It's interesting that this thing went over to guns all of a sudden, but you know, I, I just want to like is, and tastefully so to the Museum of Atomic Weapons. They used to blow up aerial nukes. You could see them any place you lived in Las Vegas. Oh they no, had pictures no, of it. no. Here's what happened: you, people would be playing in the casinos, and yeah. outside the window there would suddenly be this gigantic yeah. flash of light in yeah. the sky, and the ground would shake. And the ground would shake, and the windows would <laughs> rattle, and sometimes yeah. break. Yeah. They do the same thing if you get the big jackpot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you mean the one in the sky, right? Yeah. <laughs> at, at the at the uh, the museum there, they show you all of this wonderful stuff, yeah. and then they tell you. And the the um, the fucked up thing about it was, there are humans between you and that blast. There were military people standing out there doing the blast with nothing. Oh I mean, no, there was uh, no. Uh, they 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 had them. they had them there. They put the troops on the periphery of the of the of the explode zone okay i can't say drop zone because they didn't drop it and uh, they would sit there and they would uh, have dark glasses on so they wouldn't get blinded from the from the glare but nobody I'm seemed not... to care whether because in those days they didn't know what the radiation would do to them they, this is before it was dropped on hiroshima they had no idea what it would do and so they just cavalierly okay let's get the troops around here so it's like a, you know and see how they're affected by it and a lot of those people in later years died of cancer. Yeah, okay? Yeah. And um, let me tell you another story. There was a film. I can't remember the name of it. I think it was called The Barbarian with John Wayne. Are you, You're going yes, right? <laughs> uh, yes. Jeff, you know what I'm talking about. Talking tell about him. It. Tell him. Tell him. Well, they made this movie, and it was, if I understand it, it was in a tunnel in Utah. No, uh, they, and, they they were they were well, shooting. Maybe it, it was another it was, story it, it, that's similar, yeah. where <laughs> oh. they made a movie in a tunnel, a tunnel where they used to make atomic uh, testing, and uh, they stopped using it. Gee. However, somebody said, "Well, we can make a cool movie about that." So there was like so many people who were in the in this movie. They all. Died. Well, let me tell you, uh, the, the film was called, I think, The Barbarian. It starred John Wayne, who subsequently died of cancer, Susan Hayward, who su subsequently died of cancer, Pedro Armendariz, who subsequently died of cancer. His last film was, was uh, From Russia With Love. Uh, uh, there were a lot of deaths as the result of the making of that film, which was done in the Nevada desert while they were dropping the bomb, you know, 100 miles away, and the cloud came over the set. Right, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because, because we didn't know what these, what these bombs would do, okay? And, uh, in fact, the scary story is that I heard is that uh, you know the, the 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 people who were working on it um, in uh, Al where was it uh, where was it in, uh, in New Mexico Los Alamos Los Alamos Alam New Mexico Alam and then they went and dropped them you know blew them up in Nevada uh, Edward Teller didn't even know if when they blew the bomb up if the atmosphere wouldn't explode. Yeah. Wouldn't but, catch fire. You know, that, that that's possible? funny because I was watching just today. I watched the bomb. You ever seen that documentary? Yes, it's one tr one bomb after another. Two hours of just nothing but every every bomb literally that went off and, and how, how much they built it and how they uh, and designed the designed it uh, and the, the whole and the tonnage of it. Two the, hours long. The tonnage of each one and it's yeah, one and how they 
right it after so, another. It was such a, uh, uh, you know, it was a bunch of scientists building something in their backyard. Yeah. It so crazy. They, they didn't know what it was going to do. Some scientists felt we would maybe blow up the atmosphere. Okay, so let's shoot the gun. Let's, let's yeah. let this bomb and go how off. Close, you know how close we came. You yeah. know, with the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, so when just, you talk about having having the other. troops on the periphery, they probably didn't even consider that this would be harmful to them because they were far enough away from the blast that yeah, they wouldn't they were, be. They were hiding behind boxes. They wouldn't be hurt by and, the blast. Alex, yeah. I, I was watching, uh, funny that you guys are talking about this. I was watching Fat Man's clips from Fat Man and Little Boy, Boy yeah. with yeah. Uh, Paul, Paul Newman. Newman and John Cusack. Yeah. And uh, in that John Cusack plays uh, Louis uh, yeah. Sloten, who uh, did a similar thing. They called it tweaking the dragon's tail. They actually would take a, a real screwdriver and uh, bring the fissile materials close together. You know, and what makes the bomb go is they use supersonic speed from a conventional explosion to push those things. It takes together. dynamite actually to blow up a. a <clears throat> so, a anyways, in the movie, bomb. yeah, right, dynamite. So, in the movie, uh, Kushak drops the thing and gets exposed with a blue flash of radiation, and he dies. It, it takes him like five days to die, and they show that in the movie. So, I think Alex, I think. Uh, some of them, anyway, knew the dangers of this kind of radiation. Maybe what they didn't know is how it was, how far or how dispersed well, they, it they would probably be. figured these soldiers were maybe yeah. ten miles away from the blast zone. How are they going to get hurt by this? They're only going to maybe yeah. feel the yeah. shock wave. And I know, we, I know why they died. They didn't have those little school desks that you. <laughs> you get under right, yeah. Well, I think it's once the it Navy. Got it. Don't forget, just Navy before the bomb goes, goes off, guys, to duck and cover. It was a lot of radiation involved. Yeah. So you know, I mean, I scientists in the Navy are smarter than the mil of the Army. Because the <laughs> Navy wanted the Navy wanted them, and they blew them up, and then all of a sudden there was all this radiation, and the the fish started glowing in the dark and everything else. And so they took all the boats that got exposed and took them out to the ocean and dumped yeah. them down. There. But the, 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 and, I, and towed some of them back here to yeah. San Francisco yeah. at Hunter's but, Point. Yeah, 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 I was, I was uh, in uh, the Marshall Islands with Greenpeace in 1985. We were moving Marshallese from Rongelap to uh, an island 100 miles away because the bomb from Bikini, all the radiation fell on them there. And the Navy right, right. tested boats there. I saw one of those boats. It had radio signs on it. I mean, we're talking about a big battle cruiser or something. And But a lot of those, they didn't decontaminate them well enough in the Marshall Islands. So they towed them back to Hunter's Point and Treasure Island, where the guys, the workers, would uh, go inside and hose them down some more to decontaminate them. You know, an right. incidence uh, of cancer. Well, uh, then point let's is the let's highest. let's not talk Maybe. about uh, uh, the irresponsibility of Kim Kim, Kim Jong Un and his nuclear <laughs> uh, uh, program. Compa Why you you think that the the that the way the amount of people that the our military government has wasted is is comparable to that? Is that what you're saying? Oh, way more comparable. I mean, I, I'm sure that Kim Jong Un knows that because of the past, knows the dangers of nuclear power more than we ever did when we were blowing those bombs off. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, but... Do you uh, think he has the capability to huh? launch a nuclear weapon? Um, at least at the South Korea. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to pa Patrick a second, uh, because uh, today uh, uh, Stephen Hawking died. And for some yeah. reason, I thought about you. I don't know why, because you're in a wheelchair, right? Yeah. And, and But... You know, I mean, this guy, it was predicted he'd be dead within like two years and he lived 60 years beyond that diagnosis, you know? I mean, amazing. Do the Stephen Hawking voice. No, Phil. Yeah, he can do it. No, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> Computer uh, simulated. <laughs> did you find out which version of ALS he has? Had? No, no. He had the good one. He had the good one, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> the one that takes 50 years. Yeah. Well, no, most people don't live that long. He somehow, he just managed to. You know, I, I think it's it, it was uh, 
amazing, amazing thing. As amazing as the rest of his life. Hey, I, I, I got a, a story, uh, a J. Robert Oppenheimer story. It's short. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. How My long? friend Andy, yeah. who lives across the freeway from me, his dad worked in the Manhattan Project. And uh, Oppenheimer went to his high school in the state of Washington once to give a talk after, you know, he was out of the program mm -hmm. and everything. And so Andy's taken a pee in the men's room, and he said Oppenheimer came and stood next to him and took a pee. And nothing was said until Oppenheimer finally said, you know, I was the reason your mom and dad got together. <laughs> and I thought, holy shit, what a story. You know, a little slice of life from Two people in the Manhattan Project. Uh, <laughs> Edward Teller. Always, a, always uh, funny little stories like that with the Manhattan Pot Project. Yeah. Edward Teller had a building, a complex in San Ramon. It's uh, since been uh, uh, raised and they put office buildings there. But the city of San Ramon used to let our SWAT team practice uh, uh, room entries and blowing up doors and and stuff like that <laughs> in the old edward teller building and oh, about it i i <clears throat> running through there but we were talking and, about oppenheimer huh i know with teller <laughs> oppenheimer they're all you know out of the same uh no not uh, really uh, not really <laughs> oppenheimer was supposedly a major jerk <laughs> i yeah. mean uh but, he he, ev you know, he eventually got thrown off his own project because they they yeah. considered him to be at risk because so he because he was Manhattan, jewish what was the Manhattan Project done in Manhattan, or was it done at Lawrence Livermore Lab? It was done in Manhattan. It was done all over. I mean, it, it was, was in Alamogordo. It, it, I think it was. I think, if I'm not mistaken, correct me, yeah. Jeff. Do you know anything about this, Jeff? The the Manhattan Project took place in the basement of the of Columbia University, I believe. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah. I yeah. They had to spread it out, though. They had to spread all that Well, research. it started here because this is where Einstein was. Uh, and uh, a lot of the great minds of the universities at that time. Uh, and that's why I think it started here. And then they moved the development stage to Los Alamos. And then they ultimately blew the bombs up in, uh, in the Nevada desert. One time we're driving, I and my friend Steve were, were looking for a whorehouse in, uh, in Nevada. Now, the <laughs> reason we were looking for the whorehouse was we were going to do, we do a documentary there. We are going to do oh, a, yeah. a, a, no, really, an episode of Midnight Blue at, okay. this, at this thing, which, which was a whorehouse that was formerly a chicken coop. Are you ready for that? If you can imagine that, all right? And uh, we, um, we, we couldn't find the place, and we said, well, maybe let's take this road here. And we start driving down the road, and it's a dirty road, and we figure, oh, maybe it's the end of this thing. And we go forever, and finally we hit a <laughs> sign that says, turn around and go back, nuclear testing area. <laughs> you got a picture? Huh? No, no. Picture no. sign? No, in those days we didn't have iPhones. It wasn't that easy. Yes, uh, uh, Bob. Dumb question. Did uh, Stephen Hawking ever get his degree? Because I heard that he dropped out when he got the ALS. He he became. I think that all took place when they made him uh, chair. He when they gave him the Lucasian chair at the university. I think all of that went away. It was a huge presentation. They made a lot about it. He gave him a particular seat at a particular table, and it's called the Lucasian chair. Does it really mm -hmm. matter? <laughs> yeah. nice it's like they suddenly say, oh, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, we can't publish your book, The Theory of Everything, because you didn't finish, you didn't finish college. Yes, Patrick. I mean, the guy turd is smarter than Oliver. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he, he, I'm and he, you know, I'm impressed by the fact that he came up with theories that you and I can't even begin to fathom. Okay. Uh, he did it all off the top of his head. Uh, he, I said he did every, he didn't ever wrote anything down. He had because he couldn't write literally physically. He had to do everything in his head. Hello, Ray Renati. How are you this Hello. evening? Hello. Yeah. How you he, doing? He did everything in his head. 
Uh, and I, I'm very, you know, I'm very impressed by that. But what I'm ultimately impressed by was he managed to do well enough with the women that he scored two of them and had two children. You know, he he divorced one wife, married another one, and he's there with a with this little machine talking to him. You know, uh, yeah. uh, oh. uh, uh, okay. Yes, Sir Patrick. Yeah, uh, a friend of mine and I we were talking about that years ago. That how bad must his ex-wife have been at sex that he would kick her out and find somebody else? I mean, you know. Because yep. you're right, here's the guy talking into a machine, he can't do anything. She must have stuck at sex because... Well, what? Well, my feeling so is, speak. as a guy, my attitude is much respect. <laughs> you know, much <laughs> respect to you. Absolutely. I mean, he had he said, you suck. I'm finding somebody else. And hey, Patrick, you still got... Right. Just get one of those computer-animated voices. Tell them that you're really alive. And and you're looking for a new wife. <laughs> oh, that's evil, man. That is really evil. Yeah, because no man's ever dumped his first wife. <laughs> well, I was no the reason the reason what I was gonna ask you tonight, that being the case, you know, with is being in in a wheelchair attractive to some women? I mean really where you, where you score as a result They're always pushing you around of the wheelchair. <laughs> okay. no, I there are, I shouldn't just limit it to women. There are people that have fetishes for handicapped people. And then I do know um, one of my first experiences that I didn't let get to an experience after I got uh, paralyzed. I was in a club with some friends and I had two women come up to me and they wanted to go home with me that night. Because I was, I was dancing with them, and, you know, I believe it or not, I'm not shy, and I'll go out on a dance floor in a fucking wheelchair. I don't give a shit. Um, but I had them come over, and they were sitting on my lap and pawing me, and they wanted to go home with me. But my problem was I didn't know what I could do performance-wise, and I didn't know how to explain to them that this isn't just like hopping in bed with anybody else here. So I lost my opportunity to pop my disabled cherry on that <laughs> night. You couldn't tell them they were It's also a security issue, Patrick. If you go home with them, you don't know if they're going to, you know, tie you up and steal all your shit. And, you know, I, I mean... Well, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's true, but the thing is, um, I was talking to some female friends about that incident, and they had told me that, yeah, there are women out there who, you know, their interest is just to try out different men, per se. Yeah. yeah. And, if, and if I knew that at that time, I would have taken a shot at one of those two, because if they weren't willing to go home put up with not really knowing what the fuck I was doing yet I would have gotten laid a lot earlier uh, yeah, but this was at a time that you this was, this was at a time you didn't know whether you were capable or not of it well it, here's the thing if, if you walk into my bedroom and I pulled the, the uh, covers off there is a, a pillow for my legs and I, which isn't that big of a deal, but that's one thing. Um, there's a rope in my bed, and that's so that I can turn myself over. But again, I mean, Phil shaking his head, and that's just it. You look at this, and you go, okay, what the fuck? I've also got... What about uh, the handcuffs? <laughs> no, I've got... Kinky, <laughs> very kinky. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a gate belt in there, mm -hmm. which is it's a wide belt with a buckle mm -hmm. that I use to fasten a pillow to my wheelchair wheel so that in the middle of the night I don't bang my hand on the, you know, on the yeah. damn wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. You see these different tools and it looks like there's an S&M thing happening. 
<laughs> cool. <laughs> you know, if if you're not if if you're just coming home with me and I just met you at a bar or something, your intent may be you want to have sex with me, but maybe you're not into S and M. Well, I'm not either. That's not what that shit is. Yeah, so, but you might get lucky. But, <laughs> you so that, that on the cab ride so, over. What were you? What were you saying? What did you say, Rob? You, you explain all that on the cab ride over. Right, right. You're not well, going to believe my bed, baby. <laughs> so I, I mean, I knew I knew my shit worked. It was a matter of <laughs> trying to explain to somebody else, and and it just and. and you know, after that, thing just kind of started rolling for me, and I, well, literally. Um, so, you <laughs> well, know, but, uh, normally after a little bit of foreplay, they can see if your shit's working or not. Well, that yeah, that that's how you get that shit working. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, you don't have any feeling down there. Well, yeah, but it still, it, everything responds the same. Wow. The, the brain does not connect to it. See, I, mean, I, 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 I would think you would need, I would, th it just I, from what I know about using my penis, that you would need some feeling down there in order to, to get erect because you need the stimulation to get you erect, but it doesn't, it, uh, you're saying that doesn't really matter. Well, you there need is, to, is well, well, wait, you let him finish, Phil, please. Thank you. There's feeling down there, all right? But, the brain doesn't register that there's feeling. I mean, if if I if if I want to masturbate, I can. But it's like somebody else is jerking me off because, or I should say, I'm jerking somebody else off because I can't feel my own dick doing what it's doing. But you can feel it's, your hand. You can feel your hand on it. Right. I can. But the pressure. Now, it, Ray, 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 I think has. Well, a I just, I mean, your brain has different parts, so it's like, you, you, like the part of your brain that knows that's happening is working, but your conscious, you know, frontal cortex or whatever prefrontal is not feeling the actual right, there's, incident. There's, yeah, but there is a part of your brain that is responding, but it, part of it that's not. Right, and I, I mean, yeah. when I was with my ex, I remember one of the one of the first time we had sex she got pissed at me because she was you know trying to titillate me by you know dancing and all this kind of shit and nothing happened you know and i mean she knew there that it may not happen but she kissed me and all of a sudden i got a boner and it was like i did all of that I'm fucking sweating after all of that, and all I had to do is kiss you, and you get hard, and it just, that's the way it goes. You know, I mean, it, you don't know. So, if you're going to have sex with me, foreplay is the best way, and then yeah. we can... And I can take, and you can take, and I can take care of you, baby, because my head still works. Absolutely. It's at the light height. Yeah. <laughs> Are we learning anything tonight we didn't want to learn? Yes, Renee. <laughs> One time when you told that story, you said it was really interesting that you found the inside of your thigh had yes. become. Yes, you, you do remember that. That that correct. That that one of the things that when I orgasm, I do get a weird. I can't say it's the same as what everybody else feels, but I get a weird sensation down the inside of my thigh. Wow. And that's when I know that I came. You know, and it's weird because I remember what it was like before, but I'm starting to forget because it, it's going to be 15 years in, what, uh, three weeks. So, yeah. you know, it, it it's a different yeah, way. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking now it, that, that, uh, that, uh, that um, um, uh, Stephen Hawking probably was having some fun, you know, oh, having a good time. He was going to have a good time. By the way, I, I uh, uh, any anybody else have a comment on this? Yes, Renee. I, oh, yeah, oh first Ray Stephen and then well, first Renee, then Ray. So, sure. His, so Stephen Hawking spe, uh, started to focus on his physics at Oxford. Later, he went to Cambridge, where he was awarded the prestigious Lucasian Professor of Mathematics chair. And so this is a, a chair that has been held by um, Newton. 
and I think Einstein, and so it's a big deal. Somebody else currently has that status, but... but what, was it a wheelchair is the question. No, it's what? a big wooden thing <laughs> with a crown on it. <laughs> My chair has been moved by waters yeah. moving in storage. Right. Yeah. Mathematics. Yeah. Though. Ray, you want Ray, Ray? Ray had his hand up. Oh, yes. I just wanted to. Uh, one interesting thing about Stephen Hawking is that voice that he used was from 30 years ago. It was old, old technology, but people recognized him with that voice. So whenever he went to an interview, they would pre-ask the questions and he would pre-record them, because uh, the new with the newer technology, you can do it in real time, but. He wanted people to recognize that it was him, so he never moved to the new technology. He used the old technology, so everything had to be done beforehand. Because if you didn't questions. hear, because that voice was almost significantly his in a way. It was. I mean, so he never went. He never got. But so everything had to. All his interviews had to be planned ahead, and he was actually just sitting there. He wasn't actually doing it in real time. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I would imagine, like uh, yeah. when he did Big Bang Theory. I mean, all yeah. his lines were probably programmed into it first. Yeah, because that old that old technology, you couldn't do it in real time. He was that on the did, Simpsons. Yeah. He, he used yeah. the, and he actually yeah. he actually did his his voice. Who yeah. was it though? I'm trying to remember who it was that lost his ability to speak, and so what they did was they synthesized. They took his his actual voice recordings of his voice and synthesized it so that when he used that kind of machine, it sounded kind of like him. Oh, it was... was it Roger uh, Ebert. Huh? Rod Roger Ebert. Yes, yeah. it was Roger Ebert. Oh, that's Ebert. right. Roger Ebert. And they're actually doing that with Dwight Clark right now. Really? Dwight Clark? Really? Yeah, he's, he's got ALS, and they're, they're recording his voice right now so he, can, call me so he can prepare him for that. Yeah. Okay. So we. So is. Does anybody know if ALS in any way, shape, or form is tied to traumatic brain injuries? No. Yes. Is it? A friend of mine was just diagnosed with it about a month ago. Yeah. So we. Okay. So. But the was it? Was other, it, So the no. reason I know that there's two, at least two ALS types, is because the gentleman who used to live near me um, was an avid hockey player. And when ALS hit him, he was gone in two years, wasted away to nothing right in front of your eyes. Well, and I always wondered that fact, if that was the issue. They're slowly, they're tying it to CTE, which is what the football players are having. Which is con uh, concussion. <laughs> it's, yeah, I can never remember what the CTE means, but my, okay. my friend uh, drove truck. We used to drive truck together. Mm -hmm. And he uh, he fell off the top deck of a car carrier, and oh, yeah, he hit cement, and he was fine for, you know, he he fell off and had a seizures, had a couple seizures, and then over the last two years, he had a couple more seizures, and I saw him about this last summer. And he slowly lost his voice, and now he's having choking problems, and now he's up, he's going through brain trauma, uh, uh -oh. and he was li diagnosed as uh, having ALS back in December. Wow, this might so be that. Now we don't know how long he's going to go. Hmm. Well, so he could have the long one, he could have the short one. We don't know. Yeah, uh, I think Stephen Hawking pretty much outlived most prophecies. Oh, yeah, man. if you look it up, they, they say it's two to five years, but could be 10 to 50. Well, they say there's 10 really to 50 no, now because he went to 50. Yeah, he, yeah. He, you know, and, and there's really no diagnosis of, you know, there's real no prognosis of how long it's going to last. So did you guys hear that 23andMe will actually do your... D so if a female sends in her DNA test for 23andMe, they will do the testing for the breast cancer. What's 23andMe? What's, yeah. what's 23andMe? One of those DNA places where you <clears throat> can find It only out. does a couple of strains, though. It only does a couple of uh, certain tests. It yeah. only does a couple of many, many tests that need to be done. But DNA 23andMe is the ancestry ancestry stuff that you guys have been swabbing your cheeks with and sending it in and no we don't swab our cheeks we you spit in it yeah you That's send them true. your spit so it's interesting that they're morphing yeah. into a dna testing now that's well, an interesting segue 
yeah, it's controversial, uh, you know. I mean, with Ancestry.com, they give you the raw data, and you can download it and then send it to somebody who will tell you what your chances oh. are. Various, but uh, you know, and I have that, but I've chosen not to send that to anybody <laughs> to figure that out because I'd rather not know. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, uh, how, yeah. much, how much is that knowledge worth? I mean, if it's something yeah. that they can prevent, then maybe it's good knowledge. But if it's something that you can't prevent, but you can just know you have. Eh, yeah, good point. Maybe you don't yeah. want to live the rest of your life knowing that. You know? Yeah, knowing that you have a 75 percent chance of getting Alzheimer's in 10 years or something. Like yeah. That. I mean, who the hell yeah. wants to know that? No, you want to know <laughs> but, that. Yeah. You want to I don't. Know. I don't want to know. <laughs> I, I want to know so that I could prepare for it. I mean, it might make yeah. the difference of how I would live my life if uh, well, finding I was going to have Alzheimer's in ten years. Uh, uh, first of all, I, I'd prepare for it, and second of all, I'd do some things that I want to do before it hits. You Why know? not do it anyway, though? Well, I would. Won't necessarily but, tell you when, no. though. Yeah, I mean, you might. Why wouldn't you just do that anyway, whether you know you're going to get Alzheimer's or not? Well, you're I, get I'm, I'm worried that I have some failing brain function lately. I, I, you know, yesterday I was doing something that was very repetitious. I've been doing for the longest time, and at one point I went, "What do I want to do next here?" And mm. I couldn't. I was it's kind normal. of. I was kind of stunned by that. It took me about a minute before I figured out where I was, and then I got the whole thing going again. You know, but. Uh, I'm 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 starting to worry about that, but it doesn't matter. When I'm a babbling idiot here, just shut me off and I'll sign off and we'll. I think everyone gets some amount of it, no yeah. matter what. From what I've heard, it's normal. Well, yeah. Uh, hey, go to an oxygen bar or get a uh, yeah. portable oxygen. That that is so good. You know, that just kind of freshens up your brain cells and. <laughs> you know. Oh, oh, by the way, no, I'm I, not I, kidding. And I did I I didn't separate. Yeah. You didn't hear it because. We were, unless you were listening to the audio tonight of Bubbles, I actually had him, I think, on the one we ran tonight, say hooker for you, Renee. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I, and if I can find it, I'll, I'll, I'll separate it from the show so everybody can make it into a ringtone. Ringtone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That'll be great. Let me bring, let me, let's change Thank subjects you. here. Uh, we've, I think, exhausted uh, Stephen Hawking, although, you know, great. Great, to, uh, a great person uh, for all of us, okay, and for for our society, and um, this but uh, abusive. Too, anyway, <laughs> this just in from the Washington Post. In a fundraising speech, Trump says he made up information in a meeting with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. What? Yes. What? He, he says he made up information in a meeting with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. But Why did he Steve... tweet such a dumb thing? Why, he, why, he didn't tweet it. He, he said it in a fundraising speech. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, does he really think world leaders are going to trust him now? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, this even, is funnier than a comedy show. I'm telling you. Well, this it, is crazy. It, oh, it's it's crazy nuts. It's crazy yeah. nuts. What do you think about that, Phil? <laughs> uh, I, I want to hear how he justifies this. Go ahead. I'm playing with a Stephen Hawking a drum roll. Voice, voice generator, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, I'm trying to uh, uh, have a spot for you, Alex, uh, in his voice. But uh, so far. It's it's not the easiest thing to uh, oh, God, uh, God. to do. It's a Stephen Hawking uh, voice generator. Really? So ah. he can always be with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I I want him to say the Skype lines are open. There you go. <laughs> uh, I I think Albert, if I remember correctly, on my show it's serious actually made up some Stephen Hawking. He he got the same sound. He was able to get the yeah. Stephen Hawking voice sound. And he had him saying things like, hey, baby, will you fuck me? Uh, I, I, <laughs> oh, want it, no. I want it, I want it, I want it. Hey, baby, will you <laughs> fuck me? <laughs> I don't want to do it. That's terrible. But what was that in, though? There was Not some today. comedy. There was some comedy. It might have been something done by the South Park guys in which um, uh, Stephen Hawking was making love to somebody. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah. But... Um, uh, it, uh, t 
uh, today was, uh, of course, these, these marches that uh, the young people in America were doing 12 minutes out of school. A lot of them went longer than that. And, 17 minutes. And it was, it was amazing. Hold on a second, Phil. Right. It was amazing. And I really think they're really, you know, these, Marjorie brought this up, and it's a good point. Some of these kids are only three, way, uh, three, eight, three years away from voting. Oh. Okay. Some of them were six months away from yeah, voting. Yeah. So, so yes, Jeff. One of them I heard actually was 18. Yeah. Yeah. Just and I'm ready to oh, vote. oh, they can vote at 18, right. So right. they're, they're right. all within a couple of years of being able to vote or able to vote right now. So, th it, it, and, and Trump has done yeah. nothing to engender uh, uh, good feelings among those people. Uh, and I think there may be in the next election a lot more young people voting than we've ever seen before as a result of this thing. Yeah. Well, that would be great. Anybody have any feelings about the, uh, the win last night in Pennsylvania? Uh, it's not over yet. <laughs> Well, it's not over yet, but it's it's he's going to. They're going to do a recount, but, it, yeah. but they, it's pretty close. It, it's, and they and the Republicans are claiming that there was some sort of voter fraud. Oh, <laughs> fuck. They, 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 they haven't blamed the Russians, uh, but uh, uh, you know uh, they're saying that uh, the people went to vote for uh, uh, Scaramucci and uh, Scaramucci. When they Whatever his name is, Sirocco. Suckoff. Hey, was his name? Suckoff. The, the guy reminds me of somebody that has a <laughs> gravel, off, yeah. uh, a gravel pit and uh, and dresses like you know like a mafia guy. Uh, but um, well, at least he's not an orangutan. What, did one of those run this year? Yes, his name well, was yeah, yeah. He actually is our president. Is president, president, orangutan. president orangutan. Yeah. By the way, uh, Patrick has his hand up. Yes, Patrick. It's too long. It's hard to spell. I don't think it's going to really matter one way or the other because that fucking district is well, yeah. redone re anyway. So whoever wins is going to be fine for now, but then next election period, who the fuck knows? I, I think so, armed with that knowledge, nobody really thought it was going to be uh, a, um, a, a, a slam dunk of anything. But the, what it was was an indicator of how Trump's popularity is holding up in these areas and for people who maybe would have voted uh, Republican didn't. Uh, and and, and so this was just like this was like a litmus paper. They know that in nine months that congressional district isn't even yeah, going to exist. Right. And these two guys are going to have to run in two other congressional districts and not against each other. Bet Wait a minute. Let me finish, I Phil, please. Yeah. Maybe you might learn something. I don't know. Well, maybe uh, you'd learn something if you listen to me. Well, not when mm -hmm. you interrupt me. All right. But, okay. So you want me to interrupt you? No, no, no. no. All right. Well, you because know, I'm old and I lose my mind and my thoughts when I don't, you know. Well, right. Yeah. Hold on. We'll get to that in a second, Phil. I'm hold the on. one that's going for an operation. I should oh, have God. He just pulled the I'm sick card. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, or the I'm Jewish. Listen, I worry enough about you without you bringing it up. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just finish what I was. Now I don't even know where I was now. What was I talking about? See? See what you do to me, Phil? You were talking about how you forget everything. No. But, hey, that guy, Lamb, I guarantee you he's vice presidential material for the Democrats. He'll, he'll serve seven I, I, I months. Doubt, I doubt it. I doubt it. He's good looking. He's got everything. He's he's a he is a stealth candidate. I will agree with you, but he's not ready yet. Okay. You, you were talking about all the young people that are going to vote now because yeah. of the Trump's bad uh, response to the uh, slaughter in Florida. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what you were. Yeah, talking. and I think that's a great thing. Yeah. yeah. What did I you just that, send something, this, Ray? I forgot it. Ray, did you just? This say is the value of the election. Yeah, the, yeah. Just to save Phil time, I put up there. There's already a soundboard on the internet. You can do Stephen Hawking voices. Oh, oh really? Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I just did. Just want to save you some time. Uh, <laughs> I, I made it work. Yeah, but anyway, yes, Patrick. Patrick. No, no, no what I, Let me just finish what I was going to say. Uh, all this is really an indicator of is the weakness of Donald Trump. At this point, because this guy should have won by 20 percent. That's what Trump won by in that particular district back when. So it's really just kind of an indicator of the mood of the country and the way it's going. Yes, Patrick. I disagree. I, 
I think the people that voted for Trump were just pissed off union people and regular folks, and that probably won that district at that higher percentage, and they went back to their regular voting ways again. Because that was never a hard red area until yeah. Trump came in, and those same people, which are union steel workers and, and that, that type of um, employment, that they get regular folks. Yeah, but a couple of months ago, what was it, in Arkansas, was it, with uh, Alabama? Uh, Alabama. Uh, that, that was also somewhat of an indicator as well. These are just giving us a sign that something, there is a seed chain going on, and that he, uh, Trump has not engendered a great deal of goodwill for the Republican Party. You know, who's rattling his whatever? That was me. Oh, I'm sorry. That was I had you. to move something. Oh, okay. Uh, so, Ray, look, wait a minute. Did I see Jeff's hands up? Did you put your hand up, Jeff? Yeah, I did. Uh, I think I was very interested to watch the children uh, speaking today. And mm -hmm. some of them are quite articulate and some of them are kids. Kind of, uh, kids. just emotional and, yeah. and kids. And, you know, and, and uh, I have uh, kids and teenagers, so I'm, I'm very uh, familiar with that of uh, my grandkids. But... Um, I think that this is a one-day uh, accomplishment, which is good for them and for and hopefully for us. Well, there's another one coming up in about a month, you know. The well, big I was going to say, it's going to have to be, you know, some more and more accomplishments. And then ultimately, it's got to really affect people voting. And and that's going to be the big change. Yeah. Well, I, uh, the other thing is about these kids is that I always have said that demonstrating is for young people because uh, it's uh, old people don't, okay? Mm -hmm. And so the fact that they're getting out in these numbers is very heartening, you know, and, yeah. and it shows a show of strength that uh, that has not been represented by young people. Uh, uh, Patrick had his hand up first and then Phil. Um, but here, here's the thing. A lot of these are being organized by adults, mm -hmm. and the kids are following suit. Mm -hmm. Are the kids able to do this on their own and maintain the same emotion and the same uh, uh, war wherewithal to do this, or are they going to be like typical teenagers, and today with it, it was a... Uh, group think thing, and then in a month, some of them are still going to be interested, but it's going to be close to the summer, and they're going to be wanting to be at the beach, and they're going to be wanting to do this, and then by the time we reach this, you know, in August, or, or the time school starts again, well, nobody gonna give a shit. Well, only, only time will tell, Patrick, but I, I hope that that doesn't happen, that they maintain this fervor, uh, and, and a lot of them still, I think, I think the next demonstration, the big one, the national demonstration that's going to take place, uh, is going to be very successful. Now, what goes on beyond that, you're, you may have a good question. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Phil. You know, I, I, and I think it was in 68, I participated in one of the, in the first Earth Day walkout. Oh. And, uh, you know, that, that was when uh, 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 all the students across the nation, they, they had this thing called Earth Day, which, uh, you know, probably John remembers. I remember. and, you know, and here it is, uh, you know, almost 50 years later uh, and or and or 40 years later. And, um, you know, Thanks. we've got uh, plastic balls in our ocean. We've got uh, global warming. We've got all of this stuff. And my generation has done nothing but contribute to the uh, to the disaster that's out there. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that the same nothing is going to happen over guns, uh, as Patrick said, as the Earth Day provided for my generation. Uh, yes, yeah. uh, Ray. Okay, so Phil, I need to remind you that that did help uh, fix the ozone layer. So that's one thing that did get changed. From from that from that movement, what? Well, well, I mean, worldwide, worldwide. I mean, we don't have an ozone problem anymore. If we did, we all be living underground. And and 
the other Patrick, I just wanted to say that the the school, the high school that my son goes to, the whole thing was organized by the kids. There was no adults involved. Same in fact, the, the, they're, they're, in they're, fact, the school yeah. sent out a, an email to all the parents saying that everyone was going to have an absence marked, and they were not really uh, supporting him much at all, um, and they had no involvement in it. No, it was all the kids. Well, also, let me mention one other thing uh, that um, uh, I read today that, um, what was it, uh, uh, what's, what, what's the set of cable networks? Uh, Discovery. Uh, they have about five different channels. Uh, they took them all off the air for 17 minutes today uh, in honor of this particular action. And, yeah, you say, okay, that's really easy. That's just – they also sent to whatever organization there is to create this demonstration that's going to be happening next month $500,000, half a million dollars. What? Oprah Somebody else sent a million. What, what'd you uh, say, what, what did you say? What did you say – Oprah. Yeah. Oprah has sent a lot of money to support those kids. And I think so is George Clooney and a few other people. Who gave, who gave Wait a, a million? Minute. Let me finish. Yes. Well, the point is the adults are staying away, but they're giving them the funds to be able right. to activate this thing. So right. th that's a perfect union. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. Jeff. I, I think the kids are going to motivate their parents, their, their uncles, uh, their, their older brothers and sisters and, and they're going to force them to to vote uh even though some of those teenagers can't vote well you, well you would but, think but they would, can motivate you, a lot of you would think that somebody like fox or a, a naysayer would try and find some kids who disagree with this and there don't seem to be any kids that disagree with this because they all know their lives are at stake nope, yes nope, nope. yep uh let's see here patrick school here in Wisconsin actually uh, very close to me where they had two demonstrations going on. Uh, one was for, you know, the whatever the hell uh, gun control thing, and the other was pro-Second Amendment. Um, so I, I thought that was good because if we're going to have free speech, they should allow the kids that don't agree with it to have their own rally yeah. Just the same, they did, and there was no bullshit either. So I was glad to see that. And one school district, they shut down all of the schools because some fucking idiot kid sent an email uh, to the administrators and said, um, today it's going to be worse than Columbine and uh, Florida combined mm -hmm. if you go through with this uh demonstration so they shut down the whole school district just out of uh precaution yeah um, um um renee has her hand up and then john okay patrick and i can't find the data so this you guys are gonna have to look this one up one it oh it's been 45 days so far okay so one of the big deals why this might not go away is the fact that every 45 days we have a mass shooting oh. it, it's that pervasive now so see, knowing that fact, I, I think it's going to be shoved in everybody's face all the time. And I think that's what these kids are going to do. And I think it's a great thing. Okay. John had his hand up next. Yeah. Uh, before I came on the show, I was watching a video on YouTube. And before the video played, there was a huge NRA commercial uh -huh. about a, kind of a soldier of fortune buffed guy. Right. And he's got an array of uh, rifles, including assault rifles and shotguns and uh, old uh, Russian rifles, and, uh, you know, he's demonstrating all of them, and he's saying how all of these have a different purpose, and he started speaking derisively about the anti-gun people, that they want all your guns. So I was wondering if uh, you you all have seen that, or, uh, you know, the, see, they're smart. They're waging their battle now on the Internet that most kids use, which is okay. online video you could see these videos on your smartphone so i hope the millions of dollars that oprah or whomever is giving to this cause is going to also produce short ads that uh, go on youtube twitter everywhere you know they, i mean they got to fight the nra back you yeah. know yeah. their own play their own game 
But you, we need to email to you, uh, yeah, YouTube and to Apple and say, you know what, get this. If I am signed in as myself, I don't want to see any NRA shit come across. Okay. If I am signed in as Renee Collins, I don't want to see one bit of crap from okay. those people. Uh, Phil has his hand up, then Ray. All right. Just let me preface this by saying, don't all jump on me. I know none of you agree with my position on this, uh, but let me state it. Okay. Uh, see, everybody, these kids that are marching and are getting the press right now feel that guns are the problem. And uh, I, as well as probably the NRA, feel that the schools are sitting ducks for uh, these uh, uh, people that go in there and start shooting them up because they know they're not going to meet any resistance. And so if I'm wrong, we'll find out very shortly because they're putting guns in, in schools, uh, whether it's the janitor mm -hmm. or uh, wait a minute, Renee. Uh, but you see what they're what they're if this is my theory. Uh, and uh, the theory of many other people that believe that if the schools weren't sitting ducks, then uh, they wouldn't go in and do these kinds of uh, of shootings in the schools because they feel that they can get away with it and they won't meet any resistance, uh, kind of like a bully. Okay, and, uh, we have a lot of hands up here. All right. Okay, that, that first, first Bobby take. Berth, then no. Renee, then Rob. Yes, yeah, Bob. My eyes just rolled into the back of my head. I, <laughs> I knew they would. Uh, so far this week, two teachers have shot up some students with their guns going off. And one in Sand City. And one of them. Seaside, Seaside. There was also a, a trained police one. officer in one of the schools. No, he was a reserve police officer well, and the mayor pro tem of Seaside. Well trained. Well, you know, he shouldn't what, have had his finger on the trigger. Oh, what are those God. things called? Because that's going to be my next point. What are those things called when you're really bad at shooting? The cops are only 35% accurate in their shooting. What is that called? Oh, Cross enough. Crossfire. Okay, so here's the deal. Number one, those kids aren't going to that school. Those young adults are not going to that school because it's a gun-free zone. Those people are bent hell bent because they're mentally disturbed and they're going back to get revenge on the people that they justly or unjustly feel but they, that they, but they, know they won't meet any resistance okay, okay. rob has true. Uh, there was okay a gun, there was a gun on the premises okay there was a gun on the premises all right. so that's not true all right and now, uh, you guys aren't even accurate with your fucking guns rob uh, rob has uh, rob, ha rob has his hand up uh, rob has the rob has the floor your your theory has uh, has a big hole in it. The, who is? How many people, how many of these gunmen, kids, whomever, go into these schools and walk out alive? Very few. Oh, this last I, guy did. No, that they usually kill themselves. Gun, right? That so they're expecting weird. to die. They don't yes. give crap if there are guns in school. It's not going to stop anything. Good they point. Crap. Good point, Rob. Uh, I agree. You know, uh, but you got military bases. They don't have guns. It didn't stop. So what okay. I'm saying wait, is wait, wait, wait. military wait. bases don't have guns. Are, right. are you These nuts? Have no. What military base have you been on? Uh, where was that uh, that uh, guy in? I the think doctor. He was, in uh, he was a psychiatrist, yeah. and he shot uh, almost thirty people. Yeah, but it, it wasn't because they didn't have guns on no, the premises. No, the they only, didn't have guns. They didn't have any guns. They didn't have guns nearby. So then you're saying there should be guns in movie theaters, and there should be yeah. guns in restaurants, yes. and there should be guns everywhere. That's yeah. the whole thing. So we're going to be well, like. Isn't, I, they used to have a name for that, where there were guns in the uh, coffee shop, and there were guns in the. Uh, in the, in, in the bars, the and there were guns. West. It was it's no, it was called Dodge Denver. City. It was called it's Dodge City. Yeah, society. Tombstone. It's not civilized society. Deadwood, Deadwood, Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, well, let's see here. Who had his hand up first? This is Patrick. Uh, Patrick. Yeah, Phil, uh, it, it, and Alex, the, the gun problem is on the base, but they were locked up, and the service members were not allowed to carry while on base and in some instances now they've changed their policy depending on what base they're at mm -hmm. 
Yes, okay. uh, I, Renee. Not to pick on Phil or Patrick, but I think they are representative of this first question. And that is, most people who have guns are not paid NRA members. Is that correct, Phil? I don't know. I, I just uh, paid... Fi uh, no, 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 no. We don't want to hear about, 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 about your wonderful contribution to a bunch of assholes, okay? Right. Uh, well, I, I want to protect the Second Amendment. Okay. And, and, and the, yeah, I want to eliminate it. I want to. I want. I want. Uh, I want this country. I want this country to go through a period of trying to repeal the Second Amendment. Well, okay, I do. And the second point to this is, if you people who want guns everywhere, then you guys are going to be responsible. And I, I have no idea why the governor of Florida or in the the Democratic person candidate for Florida hasn't said this. The NRA should pay for every single security upgrade in every single Renee, school across the United States. Renee, I am for the 21-year-old uh, uh, purchase. I am for the things that uh, the state of Florida has passed, plus a few other things. Pay for it. And, uh, but I'm also, for wait a minute. I am also I, for I, the NRA. I'm also for the NRA challenging that. And for the court to decide uh, it. that it's okay. You, you, want, you want to keep okay. the guns on the streets, then you need to. Okay, pay okay, okay. Rob had, Rob had his hand up. Rob had his hand up. Rob had his hand up. So I have to, I, I have to go back to your your statement, Phil, because you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. There, you're saying you're for the 21 year old rule yes. that was passed. I'd then, like to make it 25. Well, then you're saying you're for the NRA fighting that. Yes. Uh, I don't get that. Boy. No, I am for them fighting it because I want it to be proved in court that it is legal and that other states can get behind it. I want it to be challenged and I want it to, I want the challenge to stand. And I want the Second and Amendment repealed. I would rather see it 25 year old not 21 i want to repeal the second amendment so let's and, start and a movement i would like that. to see the the governor every democrat or independent governor of the united okay. in the united states to say right uh, now that the nra should pay for these okay. upgrades okay end of discussion end of discussion because it's end of show i gotta get uh, out of here otherwise the next uh, guy's gonna so feel free friday it, 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 really but yeah it, i'm it, photographing it, a concert yeah but then you it, we don't do a show monday and when's your operation Monday. So it's it. it you're, you're not going to be able to do the show Tuesday. Well, I might be. I do a short appearance. I'll be home. I might have to be standing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Phil. You know. Well, we'll wish you the best of luck then tomorrow. Uh, you know. Right, you know how thanks. I feel about it. I want the best for you, yeah, uh, Rob. You know. uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. As to Phil, thank you as well, uh, Kevin. Always good to see you, my bearded friend. My other bearded friend, Jeff. I'm growing a beard. Does anybody know? No, I guess not. Uh, Ray, thank you so much for your you participation tonight. Always appreciated. Same to you, Bob Eberth, and to Patrick, and to uh, John uh, Perulis, uh, who is a nightly feature on this show, and I love it. And, of course, Renee, who's been here a lot, and we appreciate that, too. We need the feminine voice on this show. Everybody, I think, would be nice if you wave goodbye and, uh, and we'll say goodnight to you. Thanks for joining us. And that's our Citizens Panel, ladies and gentlemen. You know them collectively as the Citizens Panel. You know them individually as a bunch of very bright individuals who love nothing more than the art of discussion, something that you can involve yourself in if you ever want to call this program. Please do it. Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. i got to get out of here. The intersection is next with Jack and Amy. That's followed at 1 o'clock this morning, uh, Eastern Daylight Time, by Connections tomorrow night at 9.30. It's Damien and The Exchange, and then I'll be here again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, you know what. Tell her I love her, damn it. <laughs>